this week back in the studio very excited getting into somewhat of a new normal this is stogie geeks episode 329 we have an interview lined up there's a few technical difficulties that we are working through and our audio engineer and video engineer production extraordinaire johnny is working on that so the stick of the week this week is the brick house maduro toro um jc newman did a promotion for that and we're going to talk about brick house i've had tons of brick houses in my experience so there'll be lots to talk about with that and the sticks of the week to let you know what we've been smoking and if the technical gods are in our favor we will have the interview and if not drew and i maverick and goose are never short of words stogie geeks episode 329 starts right now this is a security weekly production Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- a Vintage Cigar Club located in Warwick, Rhode Island is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. What's up? It's been 62 days since I have perused these four walls. I am your host, Joe Hozempa, here for Stogie Geeks, episode 329. Uh, It's different. It feels different. And when I got used to life on the road, I must say I love the hospitality of the layout. We have hand sanitizer. We have freshly sanitized wipe gear and i'm here in studio super excited to be here it's been it's been a wild ride for all of us i remember when drew and i did the first remote for me obviously drew has joined remote uh I, it's like a fish out of water right look at this way that way trying to figure that all out but i um, glad to be back um scheduling don't know if i'm going to be back consistently we have to figure that out and whatnot but uh anyway i will be like most of you and most of our story geeks listeners who are just enjoying the privileges of today and before we start episode 329 i want to introduce the little dockhead kid from texas mr drew gavin how are you hey joe how's it going man good to see you back in the studio i'm actually watching you on the uh, monitor up here i got set up for out in the uh, the garden, so enjoying the Texas uh, weather. We're supposed to get some storms, and uh, it's uh, it's been great. Otherwise, uh, yeah, just like you, just uh, staying nice and clean and healthy. And uh, I'm 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 not going out. <laughs> mm. I'm I'm not going out at all. I'm gonna let everybody else go out and see what they got going on, and then and then I'll figure out from there because the experts, the politicians, uh, city leaders, state leaders. Nobody knows. Nobody understands. Nobody, uh, nobody has a clear, concise uh, plan moving forward. Everybody's bickering and fighting each other over here. I just, I, I can go on for a while. Oh, on this, but, the same but, things happening here. A song comes to my head. Nobody yeah. knows the trouble <laughs> I've been through. Nobody knows but Jesus. <laughs> Every time I, I'm telling you, I've I'm I'm excited uh, to to talk to you today, just because I'm sitting in the you know I'm nice. I got spotlights and and things are back to normal. Uh, AC's on. I got fresh air blowing through. Uh, <laughs> I'm just enjoying the moment for today, and I think that most of us 
who are going through all of this uh, are in the same boat, regardless of state. You know what I mean? You watch mm-hmm. the news, you get one thing. You scroll through online, you get another thing. You, 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 if you're into reading the news, you get another thing. You get different theories and whatnot. And, and you yeah. know, the, the bottom line is, and, 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 and this is the advice that I gave to my family. So, uh, you know, uh, I consider our listeners an extension of the family where Drew and I are very grateful to have you here. And f- to have you tuning in, and we thank you for that, and we thank you for your emails that come in. Um, you know, it, it it's it, the advice I gave is pretty simple, right? It's it's listen, you have to go with what your comfort level is. If you pay attention to your body, you know if you, what your immune system's like. If you're wearing a mask and you're out in public, you're not only doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for other people. Please be considerate of this, just that. I'm not going on a mass tirade, you know, it's just, you know, it, 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 it's about other people. And the lesson here, and it's regardless of COVID, is that we all sh- sh- we all live on the same rock, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Or planet, right? And, uh, you know, you, 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 re- you really need to, to just, to just it, it's lessons that, my God, I'm teaching my kid, right? Wash your yeah. hands, brush your teeth, take care of your hygiene, try to be safe. Every time I tell them no, 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 it's not because I'm just dad, dad, dad. It's safety, safety, safety. You know what I mean? No, you can't touch those chemicals. And no, you can't have cookies before breakfast. You know, those are not my rules. Those are rules of nature. And I think that if we kind of slow down and use a little bit of common sense and see what your threshold is, obviously, you know, you go to takeout and politicians are saying, well, use takeout, use takeout, use takeout. There's an unknown. Tip them great. It's like, you know, I, I, I know that, that the hospitality sector and luxury and leisure and travel are going to be the most hit for sure. Um, you know, as things are getting canceled, as months go on, you know, here at Security oh, yeah. Weekly, we were looking at our big conference in August in Vegas. That has canceled. Cigar-related news, PCA in july has canceled even though some people think i i can't talk about pca because i never been to a show anyway <laughs> right you know it, it's like and now we're and i was just talking to johnny off air you know like when's our next conference for security we, you know and so we're going through our motions personally we're looking at vacation right family vacation where we're going where we were going to go how that's definitely changed if we go are we going are we driving and, you know all these different things the bottom line is, I think if we all just slow down and we take it day by day and do our best to be, sa- be safe, keep our loved ones safe, let the politicians do their thing, let the because the, there's always going to be a, an argument for there. Because now it's about ratings, right? You know, I've worked for a major uh, news station here in the Providence Metro. Uh, and, and on the outside of my security weekly duties, we still do advertising for them. Uh, through 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 my business and my agency and and you know it's like it's all about ratings. The higher the rating, the the Nielsen ratings that they get, the higher they can price and demand the price. It's based upon cum, the amount of eyes and ears you can hear it. So now it's turned into a little bit dragged out, and it's a dragged out agenda, and it's pretty unfortunate. And if you're getting your news from you know you have to go with a source that you could trust and 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 i'm not preaching which one you should use but you 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 you, again it's your comfort level that's my advice to everyone is you got to find your comfort level you got to find your comfort level for the threshold of the news and you got to find your comfort level for the threshold of your own health and the health of your family and doing that Mm. and and that's the way it goes i mean you know we're not going out and doing all of that stuff you know we got a little guy at home trying to make the best of things you know we go out but it's not like we go out out you know what i mean the only normal thing i've done over the past three weeks was golf you know yeah. golf has been practicing yeah. social distancing forever <laughs> you know other than you know and and you walk and you do your thing and it gives you a little sense of normalcy and and that's that and it's just yeah. crazy it's no, crazy to see no, i definitely agree with you on that it's, it's just you know to me it's like if you see you know like my new source, I just go to Comedy Central. <laughs> <laughs> I go there because they give me all the shortcut versions of the truth and the non-truth, so I just kind of sort it out, and then I go to the real news uh, mm-hmm. channels, and then I, I look at them, and I'm like, okay, 
okay, I had enough of this and on to the next thing. But as you said, you know, definitely, you know, it's it's been a, a lot different norm, new norm, as everybody calls it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> to, you know, I, I'm very conscientious. If I'm outside, my wife and I, we're out shopping at stores or whatever, doing what we got to do to pick up the essentials. Uh, you know, we make sure we wear our masks. And, you know, when other people don't wear a mask, or, you know, we just kind of, you know, navigate away from that area because you know it just it to me it's just be common courtesy to everybody else your own neighbor um you know just to try to keep everybody safe but other than that you know uh you know for me the big thing is just sports I man i just i i you know no baseball no you know it's just it sucks it's <laughs> like where's baseball at? i understand and so i understand and so yeah that that's for me right now is the biggest thing and then you know concerts you know it's nice it's it's going to become summer here pretty quick, and normally we get a pretty good flow through of artists that come through and 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 put on a good concert series at a, many of the venues we have here in, in, in North Texas, which is, I'm in a Dallas area, for those of you who don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's just nice to to get out and enjoy, you know, good music and other people that you know enjoy this, you know, the groups and the bands and what have you. And uh, it is yeah. it it is yeah. nice to yeah. to do that and and I'm sure you will have your yearly calendar and your yearly rhythm that goes on in your family and all of that and it's been interrupted it's been interrupted mm -hmm. and I think that's the biggest problem is that with 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 way things are going is that it's been interrupted yeah the brick and mortar shops like you know I just to go on another point here you know I went to a couple of the last few week a uh, couple in the last week. Uh, actually, a few. <laughs> I, mean, I think I went through six different ones, just looking for sticks and things of that nature. But it's just, I feel bad for those guys because, man, you know, they really want to open up. They really want to serve their customer. They really want the customer to have that experience that they like to have and going through the uh, humidor and pick out their sticks and, you know, get a tray and, and, and talk shop with the owners or with the other patrons that are there. And mm -hmm. and it's, it's it sucks, you know, that, you know, curbside is the only way to do it at, at this point. But, uh, at the same point, you know, you know, like as I tell them, just keep, just keep going there, man. Anytime you need sticks, reload, go up there, call them up, let them know, give them what, give them your list, and they'll, they'll have them ready. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, it's just, you know, uh, the other, you know, of course, you know, what, what really gets me right now is just the, you know, the unemployment rate is just terrible. I mean, just terrible for anybody in the restaurant industry, uh, you know, in the sales industry, you know, going to the malls, and it's, it, it's terrible. It's terrible to see all this thing going on. Retail. You know, you know me. I like to talk facts and figures. Retail is down sixteen point two percent in the month of April. That's retail global over wow. for U.S. Right? Give you an idea. The worst it's been was twelve point nine. Mm. Right. So, so let's yeah. look at. It. I mean, I can't turn it off. I, I went to school for economics, so it's just how my freaking brain was wired. Yeah. Right. So you got to put it in perspective. Right. So retail is down. So everyone's down. Right, that's just uh, that, that's all across the board. Everyone's down. Yeah, everybody. Here's the bright side: at least we're not in a situation where tanks are driving down Main Street from someone else, demanding to conquer land. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. <laughs> right? I, I really, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, 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 you know. And, and 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 it's funny because it's not funny. I've spoken to people who are in other countries. And about about like like because obviously with what I do in in the security weekly responsibilities, we speak to other people, and some of these cybersecurity companies are in other countries, obviously, and we speak to them. And I was speaking to the, to this really older CISO who's been around, and and uh, he's now retired, and he's like, yeah, in my country it was like it was crazy, like a, a tank would show up and demand land, and we were forced to be in quarantine. In a house, and on certain days, people were allowed to go and get essentials, and it mattered like if you were an odd number or even number. I'm assuming it would be done by address and whatnot, and th just so like you know, I don't know. It it, it yeah. I, I I and and I just kind of got off the, the Zoom call, typed in my notes for my jolly duties, and I looked at my son, and I says, you know something, he's got a good point. 
we're still as free as other contrary to media believe what people are saying and doing that there. And and we have to find ways to, you know, go back and do our thing. I know that there's a big drive-in boom and, and golf is big and fishing is big and, and social distance and uh, bike riding, bicycle, you know, pedal, yeah, like, bicycling oh yeah. and all of that stuff. And maybe, you know, maybe it's time. I, I don't know. I don't, um, This is turning into a, a, a Kumbaya episode of Story Geek, so I'm going to pivot rapidly <laughs> but Let's you know it. May, may, maybe it's time to to just you know ref, the, to just change the thing and just deal with it because it, well, what's your choice it's not like you can get on a rocket ship and say i don't like earth anymore i'm gonna go somewhere else you know what i mean and and and, and you gotta deal unless, with it unless you're elon musk <laughs> he's probably <laughs> plan, planning something <laughs> on that well yeah i could yeah. go on i can go on business with him he's the he's, he's threatening to, well he opened and said freaking if you don't you know if you arrest yeah. anybody arrest me if not i'm out of here like freaking, you know but but he's got fu money you know what i mean like you could yeah. you could you know throw it around but again it, it is what it is i want to talk about sticks of the week if we get our Let's technical talk. things uh straightened out we'll have our interview if not we'll reschedule no worries i could certainly pivot we could certainly pivot i have plenty to talk about socially what's been going on in the industry we got some industry updates and all of that stuff but let's get together and let's talk about what we've been smoking but before we do that stick of the week is the brick house maduro toro oh yeah and I've I've oh, I've talked about Brickhouse when it was Cigar Club Radio, and then I switched from then came back there came here and whatnot. I've always loved their 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 marketing pitch, right? It's yeah. give us five dollars, and oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm not not give us. I apologize. All you need is five dollars and a comfortable chair. And quite frankly, that's pretty good COVID advice if if you if you ask me. You know what I mean? You know, you, yeah. you find, you know, I found myself doing meetings uh, on Zoom outside of my house with the Wi-Fi, smoking a cigar, going through uh, business and doing all of that. But let's talk, let's talk about the concept of $5 in a comfortable chair, and let's get into the Brick House Maduro Toro. You want me to talk about the stick? The dimensions yeah, and all that super cool stuff? Okay. Yeah. This is a 6x52. Six uh, it is all Nicaraguan wrapper binder filler. It's obviously in regu- regular production. Um, it is available in a boatload of different sizes. So if you want to know those sizes, uh, you can go to the J.C. Newman website and check them out. Or I can rattle them off for you if you really want to hear my voice. If you are driving, um, there you go. So, uh, yeah, you have a, a Churchill, a Corona Lager, a Mighty Mighty, a Traveler Toro, Short Torpedo, Robusto Corona, and the little nubby thing that they like to call the teaser. And there you go. And you know what's interesting, honestly? If you get into a line, and this, has, and, and, and this extends beyond Brickhouse there, uh, if you get into a line of uh, cigars and you um, you know get into there, if you really smoke the different sizes, you truly do get a different experience uh, for sure. Um, there and and we've talked about that whenever we have interviews, you know which size do they roll it to and all of that stuff there too. But let's get into kind of how how this tasted for you, Drew. So on this cigar here, I've, I've actually had quite a few of these uh, Brickhouse uh, sticks. And, you know, the, uh, you know, the Maduro uh, wrapper, you know, really, really comes through, you know, real rich. Uh, uh, it's a Brazilian. I can never say this word. Oh, <laughs> yes. I apologize. It is not all the way through. It is Nicaraguan uh, binder and filler. And the wrapper is Brazilian Araparaca. Uh, Whatever. Maduro. A rapper. A rapper. A rapper. A rapper. A And the only reason why I can say that is because I've been corrected on that many times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for me, it's been about the third time you and I have had that discussion about a rapper. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, you know, it's very rich. I uh, compliment the cigar with coffee in the morning for sure. In the evenings, I do do it with a little bit of a Merlot. Uh, wine you know not mm. a blend 
you know, just really pairs very nicely. It's super smooth, full smoke. I mean, just really rich in content and and it just uh, as you get through the stick i mean you you know you, you get the, the small nuances of cocoa and then uh you get this you know the sweet uh nest running through from the wrap a wrap dang it <laughs> go ahead give it a wrap a rack a maduro wrapper so say uh, it wicked fast <laughs> a wrap a rack there you, there you go. go a wrap a rack there you go so yeah i mean it's it's it's, it's just really you know it's, you know it's light slightly sweet um you can really just you know enjoy it like i said enjoy the cigar either in the morning which i have and in the evenings and it, it's it's a it's a good nightcap cigar you know for sure if anything uh with with your favorite wine or beverage of choice but uh yeah i mean i've i've, I've i have no um i mean this this cigar has been nothing but uh, a complete uh consistent uh the burns nice and even uh it doesn't really doesn't really you know overpower any senses really um and and i go looking for these things i mean i I hold the smoke in my mouth for you know as long as i can hold my breath and let it swish you know swish it around and try to get in the back of the you know tongue the front of the tongue the sides and my gums and cheeks and what have you and roll my tongue up to the roof of my mouth and and see what else i can get out of there and it's just really really a phenomenal roll your tongue up to the roof of your mouth that sounds like the spanish lover (laughs) <laughs> uh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's 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 not super complex. It's just very easy on the palate, and you know, it's it's it, it's it's a great cigar for five. Uh, well, for the five dollar market, you know, area, mm-hmm. depending on where you're at. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, the the, you know, the brick house has been around. What originally it was originally launched, I believe, in 1930s. Yep. Uh, Thirty-seven. Yep. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, it was launched. It was launched back then, and you know, it, it, I, I crisscross uh, in my mind. I was so excited to sit in this chair as it's been sixty-two days. Not uh-huh. that I counted, but I did. Right, and and and, and, and the original brick house is all Connecticut, wrapper by Nefilo, all Connecticut. This here, they changed to the Brazilian wrapper Raca for the brick house Maduro for yes. for the wrapper, right? And yes. that's you know traditionally, obviously, when you when when you smoke a Nicaraguan cigar, you mentioned you 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 piqued my interest, right? When you said Merlot, I absolutely love dark cigars, or mostly kind of for me, classic facings, right? Mm. Um, so you, just to give the story geeks listener like a visual, as opposed to me just r- rattling off names, a classic dark. Maduro cigars and red wine is uh, just such a a a, a, a plethora of uh, on your, on on your palate for sure. Yeah. And also, it's different because sometimes I remember when the glory days cigar shops were BYOB here in Rhode Island. Most of them were, and I would get like a bottle of of of, of red wine or or a Merlot. I'd go Melback, which now I'm separating the categories, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but you know, you guys do it rockier soil at a higher elevation. I won't I won't bore you guys with all of that. But if if you're into Merlots and you're into red wines, try a Melback there as well. And you, uh, especially like a rich Melback, right uh, there. Or even if, if you want to complement the sweetness, you could go Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, yes. Super cool idea as well. And again, just like having different sizes that are available, the different offerings, Melo, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Melbach, uh will change that there. And what I've noticed... What I've noticed is like with the wine because it's not like it's not like here here I got my freaking Tangeray and tonic and you know I take a nice big sip, the uh, um, with with the wine you kind of like you 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 don't kind of guzzle it anyway you know what I mean sometimes you do if it's your fourth or fifth glass of wine and you're starting your second bottle and you're feeling kind of rowdy I've been there done that you know, <laughs> but yeah. but what I like about it is that. With with the with the Brazilian Araparaca, you even if you don't have it with wine and you have it with coffee or whatever, mm-hmm. there is an element of sweetness that balances that Nicaraguan, that classic Nicaraguan facing or or, or tasting that 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 you would normally get. Um, for you newer smokers uh, who are listening to Story Geeks and a shop owner or someone a mentor or whatever. 
a friend had said, well, you know, the Maduros are kind of like spicier and than the regular uh, wrappers and stuff like that. If you're already into the Nicaraguan warehouse there, you can deal with the spicy. So try a brick house Maduro. And there you go, because I do know, I mean, obviously, when I walk into cigar shops and brick and mortars in the glory days, right? Yeah. <laughs> How we started the show in the glory days, right? You know, I would listen to customers come in, you know, especially if I'm alone doing computer work or whatever, you just hear it in the background. And they're either trained or, or they say, you know, I don't want Maduro because I don't like really spicy. It's because Maduro doesn't really make it spicy. I mean, you can get, it, it is traditionally a spicier cigar, but though. I honestly feel that that's kind of like like pre Nicaraguan boom speech there coming from you know if you only smoke Dominican and you go to a Nicaraguan Maduro yeah it's gonna be spicy but if you previously smoked Dominican or Honduran and you go to a Nicaraguan it's gonna be spicy anyway so yeah. point of conversation is if you've done anything from Nicaraguan you could certainly handle the Maduro component for those new stogie geeks that are listening and uh, tuning in because I do get questions like that via email. You know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, the it, it, Doc of the Rapper, is it spicier? Not necessarily. Mo yeah. it, that's a good rule of thumb. But, you know, uh, that's my that's my kind of thing. Experiment. You might like it, you know. Uh, I, I think that the J.C. Newman Company has done a phenomenal job with marketing that cigar and positioning that cigar. And, and, and that's... That's super important, especially in these times, whether you're a brick and mortar cigar shop or a restaurant and you know, it's all about positioning, right? You have to position that that product. So again, it does have hints of sweetness. It is full bodied, but it's full bodied Nicaraguan, which doesn't necessarily mean it's peppery or spicy. Again, if you've had Nicaraguan, you know what I'm talking about. If you're new to it and you need a little bit uh, of an explanation, email me, Joey, just geeks.com. I'll call you and I'll elaborate more, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and then there you go. But yeah, uh, it, it, it's darker and spicier than, than the original brick house. But again, it's been around that line has been around since 1937. You said, right. It's mm -hmm. time for a change. And I, and I think it's a great rekindle. It's a great effort by JC Newman factory to, to produce that. And again, Five dollars in a comfortable chair is all you need, so go for it. Take that baby on the cigar on the uh, golf course for a little ride too. I've done that with that brick house stick and uh, with my coffee, a straight black. Mm. And, and I'll tell you, man, some of those some of those notes start to carry through. Uh, you know, you get, you really get that caramel mixture going. You get that. Uh, you know, if you do add some cream, I add just regular straight up half and half to my coffees when I feel like it and and, and um, yeah, sometimes I'll pop in some of that uh, what's that Bailey's Irish cream mm -hmm. just to give it just to be, have fun with it um, you know but other than that I mean with the Maduro on this stick uh, you, you definitely get that that sweetness that really comes through and like I said when you coat your palate with any of these beverages we're now discussing it, it, it definitely complements the cigar so well and and, and, and it leaves you kind of wonder man it's five dollar stick or five dollar plus wherever you're at, uh, and uh, but yet yeah, it's it's something you can definitely enjoy throughout the year, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I definitely have a box. Yep, and an, and, I, and I have an ashtray. <laughs> there you go. And and <laughs> so so Stogie Geeks rating, you would give it a box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a good stick long. to have in your rotation, and it's definitely a good stick to have. We all uh, when we have summer gatherings, and I think we're gonna have more barbecues this year. Right, we're gonna have more yeah. tempers and barbecues this year. Not to go on a tangent, why? I promise, right? But uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it's a good stick to to give to someone who who would want to try a spicier blend for their profile and all of that, and they won't be disappointed. Uh, let's talk rating. Cigar Aficionado gave it a ninety-one. I'd agree with that. Cigar Spirits gave it a ninety-three. Cigar Journal gave it a ninety, and Smoke Magazine gave it a ninety. Those are the recorded ratings for that stick. Um, I think it gets really interesting with the Brick House blend when you're talking about the Brick House Double Connecticut, but yeah. we're not talking about that on this episode. So, <laughs> the Brick House Maduro, Drew, uh, do you have a size? And uh, you already gave a rating, but do you have a size that you I like? I do the Robustos. On, I do my Robustos. I mean, that's 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 my go-to uh, size of stick because of time and and just. 
being able to pick out you know anything that I really like about that cigar. Uh, it, it's a fair, it's a fair decent size stick that uh, you can cut through in about 45 minutes or even hour, up to an hour and 15 minutes uh, as long as I, uh, those have been my experience with that stick. Okay, one thing I want to do. Store you geeks, I apologize. I have to correct myself. I said it was available in a boatload of sizes. It's available in three. <laughs> I, I, I was on the wrong stick. It's available in a Robusto Toro and a Mighty Mighty. That being said, I correct myself and I apologize. The Robusto is a 5x54. The Toro is a 6x52. And the Mighty Mighty is a 6.5x60. Um, I've had multiples. Oh, well, I've, I've had all the sizes uh, there. In fact, I had the Mighty Mighty first because I think that's what J.C. Newman shipped to us first. And I was kind of like, oh, oh okay. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then uh, I went out and got the Toro and the Robusto. I think Toro is cool. Robusto is where it's at for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very common statement f coming from me anyway, regardless of there. So th it's available in uh, three different three. sizes. Uh, there you go. And you gave it a box rating? Yes, I did. It is definitely a box, uh, box with a cigar. Yep. You can share this with friends. You can share it with, even you know, with the, my wife. I mean, she doesn't really like a lot of the smells because you know, too, I smoke a lot of very high Lajero rich cigars. But this cigar, she's like, oh, that's a very nice cigar. Mm. And she doesn't mind. She doesn't mind sticking around with me in the cigar while I'm smoking that, and she's reading her Kindle or what have you. I, so. you know, you made a, you made a uh, man. Every time I talk to you, you always bring up another idea. That's why I, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. You mentioned the significant other, your wife, and there are some cigars that I've smoked 24 hours before I smoked it, and I would swear on my right hand I didn't have another cigar since, either schedule or whatever, <laughs> and she's like, you had a, what, when did you have time to smoke a cigar today? I didn't smoke a cigar today. You smoked a cigar today because I could smell it. I was like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? And it's not, it's just not an issue, but it's, it's funny because sometimes people would, would judge that there, right? And, and, and we're going to do a Story Geek episode because I have this down to a science as far as geographical region as to what you can get away with smoking and Kissing your significant other <laughs> versus not. Yes. And let me tell you something. Stop compiling that list, Drew, because that would make a phenomenal uh, Story Geeks episode for those yeah. who deal with their significant others and they're like, ah, oh, man, like, you know, or whatever, right? And you get yeah. blamed for that. I have it down, and I even have it down to brands you could deal without brushing your teeth. Oh, there you go. Because you've come off the golf course and met him at a restaurant, case in point, and you give him a kiss, and they're like, hey, how you doing? Good to see you, blah, blah, blah. But if I had the one for 24 hours ago and walked in the yeah. house to give a kiss, it's where did you have to, <laughs> to smoke? <laughs> did you golf today? <laughs> right? So I, I think that would be a funny, awesome um, episode. So in your production calendar notes, let's, let's launch that pretty soon, like maybe June, okay. July. Uh, there just because of show scheduling, but uh, let, let, let's consider. I think that's a super cool episode. Uh, it there. is. You know what I mean? Because I've gone as far as, like, you know, uh, having some and then meeting, you know, or you get the call, oh, I'm at my mother's and we're going to do a barbecue here, especially in the summer. I live in a summer water town. Oh, we're going to have barbecue And I'm like, oh, boy, I just had a boatload of cigars. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and you're going to want the hi, honey. How are you? <laughs> yeah. I have it down to a science. Trust me. And it's how my brain works. I can't turn it off. There you go. I would give it a box uh, worthy as well. Super yeah. cool. Can't beat the price point. And away you go. So, Drew, what else have you been smoking? So, yeah, I got into some of the uh, I got into the humidor there a little bit. Started rummaging through. Uh, I sent some stuff over to the uh, Cigars for Warriors, uh, you know, to get rid of some of the cigars I have. But I found my Perdomo Lot 23 Maduro Robusto. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this, this cigar, uh, it features a five-year uh, aged, higher priming Cuban seed Nicaraguan uh, Maduro wrapper. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, you know, it, it, it just, it, it, it really tends to give you a, a little sweetness in the, in the front end there. Um, uh, it, it's uh, aged uh, five years, uh, 
Cuban seed again, uh, Nicaraguan binder, and uh, filler tobaccos. So uh, it's, it's, it's a little complex cigar. I mean, I've had uh, probably six uh, in my drawer, and I kept three. I gave away three, and then I, I busted that out, and then I busted out another one uh, yesterday. And, man, this cigar is just outstanding with aromas. Uh, it, it, it's definitely got a little spice on the finish. Uh, again, this, uh, this, the, the sizes they do offer the Vitolas is a Gordito, uh, four and a half by 60. And then they have the Robusto at five, uh, five by 50. Then they have a Bellicoso, uh, at a six by 54 and then a Toro at six, uh, six by 50. And then they have a Churchill, <laughs> uh, at seven by 50 and anybody that knows Perdomo, you know, Nick, they, they do a great job out there. I mean, they, they, they really put out uh, many different Vitolas in any of their offerings. And, um, again, uh, the wrapper on this one, Nicaraguan Maduro, uh, binders, Cuban seed, Nicaraguan, uh, filler, same as Cuban seed, Nicaraguan. It is a medium to full strength uh, cigar. Uh, for me, it's more on the medium side, just just barely touches the, the uh, uh, full side, just with a little bit of the zest that I get out of there. And I'm starting to understand the word zest and pepper. Uh, not that I haven't, but uh, on this cigar, it really just really trans transitioned through. Uh, I even started to change my uh, draw uh, habit a little bit, um, probably in the last month since we've been locked down in quarantine. It's just because I've been listening to some of the uh, experts, <laughs> and they are experts. I'm not going to say who they are. Uh, about doing the retro hell. So uh, I've been cutting down my retro hells just to really hone in on that, on these flavors. So uh, notes on this, you're going to get a really rich and creamy chocolate uh, at the beginning. And, and, and it just really comes through really nice and smooth. It's, it's very uh, light, uh, but creamy. And it just really, really coats the palate very well. And then, uh, and then it's, it, and then you'll, you'll get a little bit of the oak aroma through there, and then uh, uh, a little earthiness there, just a little bit, just a tad, and then back with the dark coffee, and that really kicks in. Uh, the zesty side of it, or pepper side of it, um, you're really going to get that really on the retro. Uh, that's when your senses really start to open up, and you just really start to enjoy this 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 cigar. Uh, and then the, uh, from there, you start to get a little bit of the nutty, uh, I'm going to say more of the almond uh, side of things, uh, just a slight smokiness uh, uh, of, uh, you know, from the almond. And then you'll start to, you, just, you definitely start to get into the cedar. Um, just, just a tad, just a little bit uh, there. Uh, nutty throughout, uh, very, very creamy uh, finish. Uh, I've paired this, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, from there, you start to uh, you know you start to wish there was a little bit more uh, on the finish there uh, as far as the, uh, the the oak and dark coffee, but it, it really come it really came together well uh, at the end for me uh, on this cigar. The uh, other point to the cigar as well is just uh, the pairing of a beverage. This one here, I actually paired this with a rum and just to kind of bring out the straight rum uh, like straight uh, all with ice yeah yep yeah cool. yep. straight yeah i get the what's that zacapa rum ron and, zacapa uh, that's ron uh zacapa. one of mike bellady's favorites fyi oh, yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so yeah i i i got i got that out and 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 poured me a, a good pour on that one and the, you really start to you know really hone in on the uh, the smokiness of the cigar um, just because your palate gets a little cleansed throughout that process. And then from there, it just, like I said, it's just an enjoyable cigar. The glory days when Mike Bellity would show up to a BYOB shop with a bottle of Ron Zacapa. Uh -huh. And I only had another half hour before I would have to be somewhere. FYI, I would call where I had to be and postpone it by an hour or so. <laughs> True stories, very true stories with that. So, um, go for <laughs> so it. So, have you have you had this cigar? Oh yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I, I, you you've taken. Uh, let me ask this question. You 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 
You mentioned zest and pepper. I want to spend a little bit of time on that because uh, yeah. we have time. And uh, also, uh, what cut did you use? Because that's going to – I've I've had it in tri- uh, all three, right? Guillotine, V, mm-hmm. uh, and Bullet. The size yeah. you had was Robusto. Is that correct? It was, yeah. yeah Robusto, okay, yep. So have I there. And one, uh, because it, it, the experience you'll get – but before you give my answer, right? Um yeah. Uh, the experience you get from that stick will vary extremely from guillotine to bullet. Mm-hmm. Cat eye, you, you, you know, obviously I'm going, you know, smaller hole, medium hole, bigger hole, right? There, but uh, uh, what did you use for the cut on that? I used the guillotine on that one, so on both of them. Uh, okay, just I because think, I, and you got all of those notes because I think you would have a phenomenal experience if you've had it bullet. Bullet, okay. Yeah, you know, the guillotine cut for me was just, it was just one of those cigars that it, the cap just looked very, uh, uh, and, and it could be due to the age of the, uh, of the of these cigars, but they, they just seem a little bit... Uh, fragile <laughs> at the cap so yeah i figured you know if i went and did the uh, v deep v kit which is what i normally do mm-hmm. with my sticks uh i'll use my punch uh you know on the higher on the higher um vitolas or the bigger rig gauges uh but yeah on this one here i decided to go with that just because the way the cap looked and i didn't want to damage the cigar and i didn't want to have a bad experience with it and which i did not but uh yeah and i've actually been told online about uh, I've, I've had other uh, listeners or uh, viewers tell me that they actually tried the cigar with a punch. And they, it, you definitely get that. Uh, yeah. How do you call that? Uh, uh, the little, the, the what? That's what do you call this? Uh, what do you call that? Tar, I guess. Uh, yeah, the top buildup. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to say. I don't want to say. I don't. I don't want people. When people think tar, they think hot and nasty. And uh, but they were telling me that 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 it never got there, and and all they could taste really was just a. The, the the Maduro wrapper really uh, intensified in the richness uh, in the chocolate, uh, and a lot of them, had, you know, even said that they got more of a dark chocolate where I got more of a creamy chocolate. Mm-hmm. So, and again, it, it could have been the filler on this, uh, but at the same point, uh, when they're tasting the wrapper, they definitely were were saying that if you really want to get that chocolate to really come through, to definitely do a punch. Yep. Spoiler alert. I got uh, one more. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Spoiler alert on our, um, on our episode of uh, Palatable Cigars for Significant Others. Ooh, there you go. We're going to have to memorize that for a title, right? This week on Story Geeks, Palatable Cigars for Significant Others, right? Um, you, the guillotine makes a big difference, too. Because yeah. even though you say tar buildup, right, realistically speaking, I judge, this is me, Okay. When I say box worthy Oasis, which I think I have one, um, <laughs> uh, fight Chuck Norris, I think I have maybe six. I even think that's generous, maybe four or five, right? Um, when I bullet cut it and it leaves the top build up, think remember you have you have a channel of cigar that of all the smoke that's being uh inhaled in there it's going to naturally build up a tout because the canal is not 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 as big that's basic physics right so um uh, how i judge a higher rating is when i bullet cut it and i'm really like and it gets down to the nub and it doesn't get harsh and some of them do get harsh but if i went to straight guillotine it wouldn't get harsh you know what i mean so you know that that's just again slowing your cadence down being aware Mm -hmm. of what what you're smoking what you like what you don't like and 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 the way you go yeah, Perdomo, you know, on this one here, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give my rating on this one. A, it's definitely going to be a, a fiver. And it, and it's not. All of that not, for a fiver? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to give it a fiver for those who haven't tried it. Get, get That's five. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Get five, in, get five in your, you know, select Batolas. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you, Perdomo has a big, I mean, I don't know any brick and mortar you don't walk into, and you're just like, wow, look at all these Perdomo cigars, and you're just wowed about what they do yeah. there, and and just like, uh, you know, for me, it's like, you know, uh, you know, I, I just I just get a fiber of everything when it comes to Perdomo because there's just so many cigars that he has, mm-hmm. and I and, and in order to get through the the you know the, the monstrosity of his offerings, which is great, um, you know. 
if you want to try different things, tr different, uh, uh, you know, lines from him, you, or, yeah, different lines from him, you, you definitely want to be able to get through that comfortably. Uh, so, yeah, fiber for me, five at a time, I do that all day long. Yep, yep. Your rating is accurate, I think, for sure. Um, if you were to type in that cigar, I know I gave it a fiver. You can go to storygeeks.com for your, for your mm -hmm. listeners. Storygeeks.com. Click on Stogies, type that in. Even in the tags, you can separate like which host did the which, which ratings. I I would give it a fiver. Um, yeah. You know, if you rated it higher, honestly, I would have made an effort this week to go back and reevaluate that stick. But <laughs> man, you 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 built that stick up to be like oh, you know, I was waiting for the super super rating, but that's cool. That's all good. Nah. You're honest. I, I mean, mean, it's a it's a great cigar. I mean, it, 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 it's it's there's feelings. nothing wrong. Yeah, it's not it's just that, you know, there's like I said, there's just so many. I, went, I mean, I went through six different cigar uh, uh, brick and mortars this week just to go pick up some things, some of the new things. You That's know, what I call and, stimulating the economy. Good job. Exa exactly. So I went around and, and, you know, and everywhere I went, I was like, wow, the one stores that I could get into and pick up my own cigars where they had me a nice tray and I can go through their humidor. Uh, you know, by myself. Oh my gosh! I mean, the the, the shelf talkers, the the, the the everything Perdomo does as far as marketing goes. It, it, you know, you could spend some time there. It's like going when you know when I used to read a lot of books. You know, actually paper books. I used to go to Barnes and Noble and just look at <laughs> look at all the different sections and you know that that's what I liken it to when with Perdomo. But you know, you definitely pull out some really excellent titles from there. And uh, but. Yeah, I mean, if you're like us that smoke cigars quite often and don't stare at them in our humidor and save them for the apocalypse, uh, yeah, I think five of each, you know, throughout the year, uh, you'll, you'll be fine. Cool. Um, zesty and pepper. You want to yes. spend a little bit of the yeah, brief moment on that? Time on that. Uh, yeah, let's spend time on that. A brief moment on that, because that, that, before I get into mine, zesty... Zesty and Pepper. Uh, before we do that, quick, I just want a yes or no answer because you and I are not short of words, and this could turn into a five-minute discussion, right? Um, have you tried the Podomo? I think it's 20th anniversary. Yes. You've tried yes. the both the Maduro and the Connecticut? I've tried the Connecticut on that one, yes. Yeah, what do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down, cool, fiver? Just thumbs, quick. Thumbs up. Yeah. Thumbs, thumbs up and, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, a fiver as well, you yeah. know, again. Uh yeah, that that cigar does take some time yeah. to get through. Size is uh, size is an issue for me, but the uh, it would be super cool if it was thinner. Oh yeah, but <laughs> I'm not Padermo, so moving well, on. I, I just I just want to you know. <laughs> I just, I just want to let you know. I've asked Padermo. I said, hey, would you ever do these in a Lancero or anything like that? And of course, his 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 his, his answer was not right now. You know, he, he you know he feels like. He wants to give all his sticks, you know, some grander, uh, uh, in, you know, in, in the sizes that they offer. And, uh, yeah, he was one of the few guys that would say, you know, I mean, he just told me not, not no. <laughs> well, <laughs> not no, right no. It, honestly, that, uh, that's another great point you brought up. Through yeah. any generation of Stogie Geeks, whether it was the original generation or if it was, you know, Paul and Coop combo or mm -hmm. me and somebody combo, me and Joe D combo or me yeah. and you combo, Lancero's concept has always come up, always yeah. come up. Through, it doesn't matter which generation there has always come up. And, but you know something? They don't sell. Yeah. They, and only... And I don't want to say only the true. It's not an elitist thing. You have to be really fanatical about a particular blend, brand and blend yeah. for the average consumer to come in and purchase a land sale. It's just fact. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's nothing right. that we can do to take away from that. It is what it is, right? So right. the answer is they wouldn't do that. Now, maybe they roll them for them and... and, and Enjoy sure. them for them and then do that there if there's some leftovers or, or whatever. Or maybe it's just sure. strictly business. Maybe, and, and again, I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but, you know, maybe it just, they, but they just don't, they don't sell. You know, I'm doing a Lancero well, now. I'm doing well, the MLB, yeah. uh, what is it called? 
the little greedy bastard. The little greedy no. bastard. Yeah, yeah, right? little greedy bastard. Which yeah. is available exclusively. Am I correct on my homework? Exclusively, is that an exclusive for underground. underground? Yeah, for underground. Yeah. So like, like, and, and when you shipped these to me last week, and I let, and, and like, I was like, oh yeah, because we had a, an interview with Mike Bellady a couple episodes sure. ago, and whatnot. And I finally got my hands on them. I'm like, oh, well, Drew physically walked in and got them, shipped them to me again. So Gustavo, if you're listening, now I'm really fine, <laughs> right? But, but, but you know, um, and, and and it was so good yesterday. I I I, I had to order them. And again, it's a Lancelot size, but and I'm sure there they do good and whatnot, and and, and they have a sure. different saying. But like historically speaking, Lanceros are not where they are, and it's amazing well, how good most Lanceros are. Yeah, and you know what? And 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 again, back to Nick real quick. You know that wasn't a bad answer, a bad answer or anything to me. That was great because he does. They do what they do there great with what they have you know what they've been what they've built their success on and the guys like uh you know like Mel, mike bellity and uh, uh noel rojas and uh i think some of the uh Cal- calavere calavere genevieve oh yeah they got they got some lanceros out there and i believe uh yeah and they're you know what they're great sticks and you know what uh it is a harder it's a much more difficult task to roll the cigars because they really want to get them perfect. They want to get them to the and that and that's what a lancero is. I mean, it's basically in that size. It has to be perfect. They have to weight it. They have to make sure it's just you know the tobaccos are distributed evenly throughout all the sticks that they package, and so the tedious work that goes into the lancero. It, it, I, I get that, but the, it, you know for them, like they said, you know this works for us and. You know, the Lancer works great for other people. And, 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 it, and it, you know, either way, like I said, you don't have a bad experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I, I definitely get that. Awesome. So. Zesty. Pepper. Oh, my God. Let's, we're not even there yet. Oh, my no, God. We haven't, oh, we haven't that's okay. I only have a couple of cigars. I'm saying, damn, this is turning into a huge. Uh, go ahead. Zesty. Go for it. Zesty versus that, Peppery. That's right. Zesty wrap. for me. Yeah, especially for me, you know, you get a little zing, in, you know, on the lips, a little zing on the, on the, uh, on the backside of your tongue, you know, because I'm looking with zesty, I'm looking for, uh, like lemon zest. <laughs> That's the first thing that comes through mind. Sure. And, and or something of that nature, a little bit of, a little bit of zing. Uh, and so, you know, when I started to engage in conversations with uh, our our uh, fellowship uh, listeners and. Other people online, you know, they, they you know, they, it, there was a lot, there was a lot of information there, um, different experiences about zest and pepper, and uh, so definitely like pepper for for me, I really get those out of the, uh, out of uh, like Roma Craft. I mean, that was probably my my best cigar for pepper, uh, not a bomb, but just really just strong in strength, and 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 just really. Uh, got me where I wanted to be with that cigar where with zest again I'm still I'm still playing with it uh, still trying to find that in, in common uh, with a lot of the different cigars I have cool so but what what's your take on that was well, zest versus peppery yeah for me peppery is a nasal component happens mm-hmm. a lot like if you retrohale and maybe it right. gets a little bit a pungent way like wow you just get either touch your nose or, or like wow like whoa whoa you know um yeah. there um peppery uh peppery to me is like a in your face flavor uh for sure uh and 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 zesty uh, it, it's an accurate description like you said it kind of it kind of tingles the palate linger smoke lingers a little bit more uh, yeah. I would even go as far as saying with zesty, there are components of zesty, and you can go to like freshness of smoke. I know that sounds crazy for the uh, for a beginner, or maybe for like, what the hell is he doing, right? But no, <laughs> like like you get like a freshness, like a like a like that grassy Davidoff yes. grass, like that's fresh. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, I actually had a discussion with the Davidoff fan. And he was telling me, he goes, man, you really want to get in the Zesty. You got to get into oh, some yeah. of the Davidoff offerings because you really start to hone in on that, which I got on my uh, homework sheet here to go grab me some Davidoffs just to really get through that and just understand that a lot more to get the brain, you know, to really recognize that, you know, in the palate. 
and you're definitely exactly correct about the pepper side because when I really want like with the Neanderthal that I smoke with Skip Martin's uh, roller craft man I, I can't help it I, I got a retro how that sucker throughout the cigar pretty you know two or three per thirds just because yeah. I love it but it's like it's so but, freaking good you're like oh my god God, yeah, this is it's awesome. an addiction. It's it, an addiction. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, it's, a, it's an addiction. It, that it, zesty component, like that aha moment for you that you talked about, for that, it's that for me in the leather component for me. Yeah. That makes me say, like, holy crap, this is a great smoke. You know what I mean? That's just the way it goes for, for when I'm yeah. describing stuff, you know? Love mm. it. All righty. Moving what on. You've been smoking. I, uh, man, I, I, I wish that this company, I, I, I wish Robert Wright all, all the success in, 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 in the world, right? Um, I absolutely positively love the Pure Soul Honduras. And I don't want to send the Story Geeks listeners on a wild goose chase, but there are some in the shop that are just lingering around. And and I've had a chance to meet Robert R Wright, and uh, 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 amazing um, when it comes to uh, a description of palate of mm -hmm. what people's palates are and and profiles. Uh, he's done a phenomenal job, in my opinion, of defining uh, cigar smoking into five components uh, there, and the rest is elaborated. Uh, his words, not mine. Podcast substance or magazine written substance, right and whatnot. But um, you know, ha having ran into him multiple times in my sphere of 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 cigars, um, out of his line, I lo absolutely love the Pure Soul Honduras. Uh, I had uh, Toro. This is a six by fifty four wrapper binder filler. Are all Honduras. Complexity on a uh, flavor and balance as far as a scale of 1 to 10. Complexity, I gave it a, uh, a 7, right? I think a lot of that has to deal with the Honduran component, right? Um, there. Flavor and balance, I would give them probably 8.59s for sure. Well-balanced smoke, super cool smoke. Bullet cut for me uh, there. I get a, a creaminess in the beginning with a little bit of almonds. Uh, towards the end and uh, towards the end of the beginning start to develop into this spice and then for me the spice turned into this this meaty leathery component that I can probably definitely get with a tatuaje pork tenderloin <laughs> but <laughs> but like like you get that leathery component for me and and and, and it, it's one of those sticks again if you happen to Track those down, Stogie Geeks. If you can find a box, box split with a friend. If you can find a box, uh, buy a box. Email me, joehstogiegeeks.com. I'll, uh, Johnny knows the app to do the money, right? I'll send you more PayPal money. You can ship it, Venmo or Cash App, PayPal. It's a lot easier for me to send you money than for me to give you cigars. I have proven that, right? Because of the way just my crazy life works, right? But, like, if you ever wanted to spit up a box with your friend Joe, I'm telling you, super cool idea, super cool box. You won't be disappointed. You got to go on a little bit of a search for them uh, there. But let me tell you something. Uh, I haven't ran into Robert Wright uh, multiple times super cool guy to get into conversation with uh super cool um out of all of his offerings i like that one the best that's green label um there and uh it's box worthy all day all day long it's box worthy i love it uh it's 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 it's, it's a great stick nice yeah, I haven't, I haven't had, I don't believe I've had anything from Robert Wright. I got a, fi for me to find library. it. Yeah, I've, it's been a while um, since, since I there, and I came across one because I came across a humidor with some sticks in it 
that I had stashed like a big human oil. And I was like, oh, my God, I guess I do save. I totally forgot about this thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I came across that, and, and I had one left, and I smoked it, and it's, it's awesome. So that was the Pura Soul Honduras. Super cool Pure stick. Pura, P-U-R-A, Soul uh, Honduras. Uh, box well, with if it's somewhere in Texas, I'll find it. I have my. You might have to go online. Um, they're not, oh. you know, uh, they're probably make your life a heck of a lot easier, for sure. I got what? friends with big humidors in Texas. You gotta be kidding me. Somebody has them. There you go. <laughs> nice. Uh, you have one more stick. I have one more stick. Cool. Then we'll wrap up the segment and then get into yeah, the other yeah, thing. Cool. Fine. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, go for it. So my next one, I actually got. Uh, let's see, which one do I want to do? Because. Uh, well, if you have two and you can be quick, you can do two. True. <laughs> no, let's. Uh, well, I have a Cohiba that I, I the Nicaraguan N54, and then I have a Punch Vintage Number 20. I don't know when's the last time you had one of those, or if you ever had one of those, but I'm gonna go with the Punch because you know I like I like I'm 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 beginning to gain some traction in the Punch lines and and um, so here we go. We had a uh, Punch Vintage uh, Number 20 Maduro 5x50. And it's about an eight buck stick. And real quick, let me just pan back over to uh, Perdomo. I believe that stick's about a ten dollar stick. Just FYI for all you listeners out there. Uh, punch vintage are aged and specifically designed cedar cabinets for over here before they're shipped out. Um, so got my hand on some of these a while back. <clears throat> they're hail from Honduras. The wrapper is uh, Ecuador Sumatra. The binder is Connecticut Broadleaf, and the filler is Dominican Honduran. Uh, the Vitolas they do offer in this, or shapes, as whoever, whatever you want to call them. Uh, Churchill, they have a double Corona. They have a Gordo, a Lonsdale, a Robusto, and a Toro. Robusto is the one I had, of course. Uh, strength is medium, and man, this cigar did not disappoint. It did not disappoint to the fact that I went back and got me another six of these bad boys because I'm going to have these in my humidor here in rotation uh, throughout the summer, I believe. So, <clears throat> again, uh, notes of cocoa, uh, leather. You get that leather component come through, uh, and and then and and it just really lingers, uh, you know, you know, in your palate. And 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 like I said, I've been swishing it around and just pushing it out slowly and just, you know, getting it agitated to the point where it's giving me the, 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 the sweetness and balance of the cigar, uh, coffee, uh, and a, and a wood, uh, a little bit of a wood. And I'm not going to say more of a, it's not really a char, but I'm going to say more of a, I'm going to say more of a oak component on this one. I'm still working on this stick, which is why I got me six more of these. <laughs> and, uh, it just really, the it just really provided a nice profile, rich profile with the cigar. Spices uh, are there uh, on, uh, uh, and you can really get those, you know, in in, in your. Uh, I can't say this other word either very well. Numami, numami, yes. Umami, <clears throat> umami, umami. Okay. That's umami. um, uh, the last word that Robert Wright uses. Yeah, and uh, so. Would you like to describe you, mommy, from for the listeners, or do you want me to? It's just uh, a, a really for me the the umami uh, uh, in this cigar. Uh, it's center of the palate. So mm -hmm. uh, just before it goes to the back of your uh, sour receptors, there, <clears throat> uh, just really rich. Uh, you can really get the kind of the meatiness of the stick, I guess, mm -hmm. the, the the flavor uh, of the stick there. Uh, and you have to just you have to really practice this uh, if you're if you're if you're going to really try to find those those, those small uh, complexities or nuances in the sticks. Uh, from there, then it went to the spices, and then earthy sweetness at the end. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the sweetness was uh, the earthy sweetness there, uh, more of a, a sweet grass, more to speak. Uh, but yeah. Uh, this cigar, as, I, as I'm going through it, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And for it being that um, I'm not sure if it's because it's aged uh, before they send it out 
Uh, you do definitely get some cedar from there, and I'm again, I'm not sure if that's because it's, it, it's 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 you know cured and, and designed cedar cabinets for over a year before they're shipped out again. Uh, but yeah, this thick for me, I mean, definitely it's it, it's got me going back uh, and 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 looking at other punch uh, cigars mm. there as well. <clears throat> and uh, again, not, not a bad stick. I mean, very good stick. It's an eight dollar stick. Uh, in my neighborhood, and it may be eight dollars plus in your neighborhood. Uh, definitely give this cigar some time to work with, you know, work work the palate a little bit, uh, not to the point of fatigue. <laughs> I've had some people that um, <clears throat> that have had this stick, and they were telling me that they, you know they they got tired of the stick after you know so many of them, and like, well, you're not supposed. To shouldn't do that but anyway i'm not going to tell you how to smoke if you enjoy it great but uh yeah uh for you know again uh cocoa leather coffee uh wood which is probably uh just a little like i said very touch of that and it may be the cedar sweetness that came through across with the grass and then the spices and uh definitely a good stick um there and i had the maduro uh, again this uh, punch vintage number 20 maduro and it is available in uh in a robusto size cool and uh yeah good stick mm. i think but, i had it i'd have to see the label you the need top. to go back and get it again oh well, i'm gonna uh, send yeah. you some I'll just send no you some. don't send me some until i send you some gustavo's Whatever. gonna freaking fall off his rock if, you, if i get bats <laughs> number three <laughs> Hey, he's a he's a he's gonna fall off his rocker. So hey, who's um, keeping who's keeping count? I'm not keeping count. I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you? Uh, what what was the rating? Did I miss it? Uh, no, the rating on this, uh, I definitely go half box uh, with someone on these sticks. And again, I mean, it's it's a like it's a it's a good you know it's a good. Uh, uh value uh i'd box split it all day long with 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 a friend <clears throat> um i know i know i'll get through these and i'll make it one of my one of my uh rotations box split with a friend email jewishstorygeeks.com sure. he'll split it with you yeah. i like it there awesome there you go all right uh i uh, this is my favorite out of the offerings from esteban carrera mm. uh mr brownstone Oh yeah, Mr. Brownstone. I Mr. love those. Brownstone. Mm. I had the uh Speedball Robusto, not that we're shocked, right? <laughs> I had the Robusto. It's it's a 5x54. Um it's available in other sizes, Smack, which is uh 6x52, uh Mainline 60, which is a 5x60. Uh, there, wrapper is a Connecticut broadleaf. Binder is Ecuadorian habano, and Nicaraguan is a filler. Complexity, flavor, and balance scale of one to ten. Complexity, I gave it a seven. Flavor, I gave it an eight. And balance, I gave it an eight as well. What I love about this stick is the second half of the stick. Again, bullet cut, totally leather component that comes in. Uh, towards the end, I know I'm going backwards, right? Uh, a leather component that comes uh, towards the end, and it has that umami flavor. And ro when Robert Wright shoots off his five points of uh, flavor profiles that smokers uh, could get of premium tobacco, umami is the last one that he mentions. Yeah. And 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 the way he described it to me was that it has that lingering like left flavor, like wow, like you know what I mean. Um, kind of like when you have a buttermilk biscuit, like an old school buttermilk biscuit, and you've eaten the biscuit, but, you know, for a while on your palate, a little bit, it's like, man, that was damn tasty, you know what I mean? Uh, if you like buttermilk, buttermilk biscuits. But anyway, oh, yeah. um, you know, who doesn't, right? So, uh, yeah, super cool uh, there. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you get some, some earthen coffee up to about halfway through. You have it with a coffee. It's, it's yeah. awesome. Um, I tried it with Merlot and a Melback. It's not as awesome as coffee, uh, just for pairings, my opinion. Uh, there you go. But uh, in regards to rating, I gave it a box split for sure. Yeah. My only <clears throat> complaint is that you have to be a surgeon to get it out of its wrapper. Wow, because yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, that's right, because right, you you, yeah, you, you get you buy one, and then if it's time to tissue. smoke, 
It's got the tissue. It's got the footing. Yeah. You got to go very, very careful yeah. with the wrapping uh, of that because it has that wax paper tissue there. Yeah. And the only reason why I'm making it a point of that is because I've had experience of Joe it. You know, you pull the tube out. Eee! That's like mistake number one. That's a great <laughs> way to waste nine bucks right there. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. So you gotta, you, you gotta be like, oh boy. Whoa, look at the way you did that. You're like totally Godzilla that crap. That's the, that's what the cigar uh, patron worker had told me. Dude, you totally Godzilla that cigar. Like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you know, you got to be careful. And I was like, all right, I'll be careful. Can I get another one? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Frickin' you just ruined this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it comes from experience. But other than that, uh, other than that, super cool stick. Uh, definitely having your rotation. Uh, you won't be disappointed. It is super dark when you look at it visually. Uh, oh, yeah. But it, it's, it, it, it starts off a little strong, but it, it, it's doable. It's a medium it's bodied stick. Yeah, it's definitely a toothy cigar for sure. It's got you know very. It's got some oils to it. Yep. Um, yeah. When I smoke when I when I when I smoke the uh, the Mr. Brownstone, I I actually lost ever so gently just roll it in my hands between my palms, and get that tissue to to warm up, I guess. Mm. And, and and then I just peel it off and then just slide off the the foot band and things of that nature. You're definitely right about that. Uh, <clears throat> the other stick uh, I believe is uh, that he has. Uh, they. That I've had with that stick, actually, I had these sticks uh, mid last year, and I got one, I believe, in my humidor now <clears throat> left. Um, but yeah, you if you let them age a little bit, let them let them sit for a little bit, they definitely tend to to cure a little bit more, and you definitely get a little bit more strength out of that cigar. Um, but the Cooper Chabra, Cooper, Chupacabra, <laughs> the Chupacabra, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 was another stick of mine uh, 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 of 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 his offerings that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, same thing, you know, just a very toothy, uh, little oily stick, and it just really comes together clean. I've had that stick with, uh, actually, I've had that stick with. Uh, I had a, a liqueur, a coffee liqueur with that stick. Oh my goodness, man! I, it just really brought out those those uh, spices. To me, it had some baking spices. I'm talking about the stick you're um, about the Mr. Brownstone <clears throat> with that, and uh, yeah, I had some liqueur coffee, uh, liqueur cream with that coffee, and uh, I did what they call like uh, chinita. Uh, it's a it, dick coffee, and you have to dirty out quite a few dishes to make this, and you get the cream, and you just let it pour together, and let it mix. Don't stir it. Just let it mix together as you're pouring, and then, and it just comes really nice and get, gets a little creamy froth on top on its own, and then um, and then definitely light up the stick and, and enjoy that. Uh, Fancy that pants. I'm telling, telling you, brother. Who the hell has time to make a chinita? Is that what, is that what you called it? That, that's what I call it. Yes, Who the yes, yes. <laughs> Hey, and you're... When you're when you're uh, you really want to have an experience, boy. You, you just pull out the dishes and you know, of course, you know, <laughs> <laughs> clean up before you come out to the cigar. Oh because, yeah, because the wife the wife will say, "Well, where's mine?" <laughs> oh, it's that good. Oh, it's delicious. It's a chinita. Sweet. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, you can you can you can make different variances with this with different cream liqueurs or just straight up mix the honey with the cream, uh, a little honey uh, or a little agave with the cream. Just get it. Or I got one of those Nespresso machines with the uh, uh, a frother, so it has a. You can do it cold or hot. Just depends on what you like. And oh my God, just mix that up together. Pour that with the coffee. You're set. So not only do you get a kick in the ass from the cigar, as far as you get, you know, you you got the the strength there, but then you also get the coffee buzz on top of that. Mm, you just can't go wrong. Chinitas with Drew. That's an episode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll be like one of those cartoons, you know. You have all the dishes, the balance in the dishes, or whatever. And and, and we we, we got to do a chinita. Uh, can you email me just some concepts yeah. of that? I, I would like to put that together for a show. You gotta you Chin gotta go out and buy. You gotta buy some hard uh, some some wear coffee wear for sure. Uh, if if you want to do this right, um, yeah. I guess you could. I guess you could do it in glasses. But I just like to pull out the the, the, the fine china. Oh. Yeah, this this stuff <laughs> that we use on Thanksgiving. What? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> the uh. stuff the, the stuff that we buy and that we don't use 
you know, or we use it as a gravy, uh, not a gravy boat, but just for whenever company's over. I'm like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and dirty up the dishes. Hey. Yeah. But hey, you know, it's, it's a great experience. <laughs> Got time. Especially yeah. now. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, now life is, should be slow enough to, to enjoy your tinnitus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely send you some. No, nah, I'm interested. I'm serious. <laughs> I'll be like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Awesome, awesome. Before we wrap up this segment, I want to remind you that if you go to stogiegeeks.com, click on the McAuliffe logo, you can join their very extremely active <laughs> ambassador channel that is on Facebook. And... um. You get some benefits there uh, to become a McAuliffe ambassador. You get to learn all about McAuliffe cigars. They do a ton of interview series on there. Uh, and there's some super cool contests that they have for ambassadors uh, there. And I'm very happy to see that McAuliffe ambassadors uh, are very active on that channel. Uh, there you can sign up um, you and meet new friends, talk tons away. And during this time, they have a very aggressive... Uh, scheduling in regards to what's going on on that active channel. It all starts when you go to StogieGeeks.com and click on the McAuliffe logo over there. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, well, Drew and I are going to talk about what's been going on. We'll be right back. <laughs> 